bet. Three, two, one. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. Welcome to 82 points of view, kind of, with Dorian. Um, today is kind of like a special edition of what we're doing. Um, I wanted to bring on somebody that's been in the pond for a while. He's an artist. His name's RJS. And the thing about him is um, he had hit me up, man. I forgot why he hit me up about, like, advice or something. Like, y'all DM me a lot. And um, I always try to give y'all advice as I try to adjust my chair. Uh, hold on. <laughs> All right, cool. That's better. Um, y'all always give me advice. Y'all always ask me for advice. I'm always open. My DMs are always open. Um, and in the midst of that, he was asking me, like, about something with United Masters, which I get asked a lot. I'm like, yo, I don't work for United Masters. The hell are you talking about? But then he started <laughs> revealing a lot of stuff. And I'm like, hold on. What? And then we just started really, really digging deep into it. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. So um, this is probably a couple of weeks ago. I told him, I said, man, I want to get you on here because people need to hear your story. So today, man, we got him here. He finally, not only that he finally showed up, we finally got everything together. He's finally here. He's going to be able to tell y'all anybody that you know who is distributing through United Masters or you thought about distributing through United Masters. You need to share this with them right now. We're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Twitter. Go and share this and tag them right now because they need to hear this stuff. So, shit's crazy. So, RJS, what's up, man? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? You know, trying to work as much as possible doing these quarantine vibes, you know, releasing music, trying to promote and market myself. So, you know, same old, same old. Ain't nothing new for me. Where? So, where are you based out of? Well, I'm based out of a uh, small town called Fort Pierce, Florida, but right now I'm over here on the southwest um, part of Florida called Naples, and it's like a good hour away from like uh, Miami, so every time I have me a show, I always go to like Miami since it's the most popular city in Florida and things like that. Okay, so. cool, man. And how long you been you been doing music? Oh, I've been doing music since 2012. Um, I'm basically kind of like... Uh, like my real inspiration that got me into music around like 2012. It's like I used to be able to rap and things like that. Um, but I was more focused on wrestling. I ain't gonna lie, I was more wrestling. Uh, rap. Yeah, I was. Re I, I was always looking at you know the WWE and things like that. And then um after that, I started. I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into uh, school. I'm gonna go to high school, do uh, amateur wrestling, maybe go to college, woo woo and stuff like that. So it was like rap was like at that time it was like a second thing. It was like a second dream. But, you know, obviously, uh, when shit got to the hand, you know, my mom's like, oh, fuck that. I'm not going to pay if you get hurt in school and shit like that. I'm not going to pay for the hospital bills and anything like that. So that was pretty much just cut on that one. So I just started doing music. And um, pretty much I, it, it just been stepping stones for me, man. I went from taping the phone to the wall and recording off the phone to recording. <laughs> oh, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What do you mean taping the phone to the wall? What do you mean? Not, like basically, um, one of one of my homeboys introduced me to SoundCloud in the early days of SoundCloud. Uh, we used to just play a beat in the background off the computer and take put the phone to the wall, picture that's like a mic, and then used to record. Wow. Like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, like one of those, <laughs> and then send it. You know, because we ain't, we couldn't pay for studio time at that time, yep. which is in high school. You know, what I'm saying? I was like 14, 13 years old. So I went from that to you know going to studios until I started realizing half of the studios I was going to. The engineer sucked ass uh personally they, they, <laughs> <laughs> so i was like fuck that i was like i'm gonna just go to school for us so i can learn how to do it on my own and that's yeah. what i ended up doing i finished that shit in a year i got my audio tech degrees on the wall over there and i got my own home studio so i do the shit myself so you do everything yourself do you make your own beats too oh no, no I, I haven't learned to make my own beats yet i i just i had just dabbled into um adobe and I started like trying to learn how to like video editing and ain't go like that's what I'm saying. So it, it, it's a lot of things artists don't really appreciate from like photographers, uh, beat makers, producers, uh, graphic designers. Because if you're an artist and you do legitimately all that, it's a lot of shit. That takes a lot of time. So I feel like um a lot of a lot of those people don't really get shot out. So when I actually tried it, I made like an AMV with like some Dragon Ball Z type fight scenes with one of my songs, and that shit took like about four or five hours. I was like, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> so that I is just, how it is, man. A lot of people don't realize that when you are really independent, like you're doing 
absolutely everything. So you learn how to mix our own stuff, and that's what you do now. And so you are 100% independent, right? Yeah, 100% independent. Like I say, I just go to YouTube, uh, depending on the producer or the beat maker, if I like the beat, you know, I freestyle it. After I freestyle the hook, I pretty much just add that on my notes or I add that on a pen to paper. Then I just add my layers, you know, my bridge, uh, my intro, my hook, my second hook, my verse, woo, uh, that and so forth. And then after I go all that, you know, I just record it into Pro Tools. I have Pro Tools over here. Um, after I get done mixing, mastering, and everything like that, and um, that's why I just distributed through uh, DistroKid. Now, no more United Masters, because <laughs> I got DistroKid and uh, Amuse. I mean, technically, I'm still on United Masters to the terminate my distribution agreement but as far as the whole uh situation where we're going to talk about later that's finally done i hope <laughs> okay so i, I just wanted you want to paint the picture so you're independent do you have a manager no no okay so no so no manager mm -hmm. you independent you're doing everything yourself you're downloading beats off of youtube you yeah, at recording beats. at home, you mixing, and then you doing all this. Do you have like a booking agent? Do you have a cousin that's related to to Jay Z? Do you have any of that shit? Shit, that shit would be nice, but no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, cool. No, so I'm you're one thousand percent an independent yeah. artist, just to make that clear. And what? So once you got done mixing and mastering all your records, what made you choose United Masters as a distributor? Um, basically because at the time, um, when I started getting into the digital distribution and putting your music on all DSPs, uh, I, I heard of Amuse. At the time, Amuse was like easy, you know, it's, it's a free, technically, it's a free, uh, uh, distributor, uh, it's on the phone, so that helps, you know, all you have to do is just add a flat format, um, uh, quality soundtrack or ways or, they don't really do MP3s, a lot of distributors do, uh, Amuse doesn't. Um, and then unless you could just convert it on YouTube, that's, you know, convert it on websites and shit like that. It's straight. But, uh, I, I, I was with them at first. Um, the problem with Amuse is at that time, they didn't, um, put shit, your shit on Facebook, they didn't put on Instagram, you know, they didn't put on TikTok. That's why I was kind of still amazed. Like how the hell did Lil Nas X blow off of Amuse if they didn't even let you put your shit on TikTok? That's still kind of weird to me, but I guess he did it. So I was like, shit, who, I was like, who was the next, um, distributor and then like i said i kept getting like recommend uh recommendations of united masters and i'm like hmm i might check them out see what's going on so i set up an account after i set up an account that's when i had went on ahead and um i, I distribute one track and i had learned because they were faster than the music the music took a little while to distribute a track um with them it only took a week so my bad for the outro this is my damn dogs <laughs> so so you so you switched over to them and they got your song on there with within a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the earliest is a week. I mean, for all any artists that's listening, to this, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> I just wanted to try it out. You know, two weeks or a month is perfect, but I just tried it out. They got it on there a week. Um, I think the first one it popped up on was you know obviously like Spotify, the Deezer, the titles that those are way easier to get into besides like a Apple Music and everything like that. So okay. All right, cool. So once you did that, and then you've been you start up you started uploading all your all your songs. Were you registering your songs in other places too? Uh, what, what do you mean as far as what? Like BMI, ASCAP, no, Sound Exchange. To be honest, once I started, because like I told you before, I had just started getting into everything I need to register my music on, and like more music business and stuff. It's like once I got down to BMI and ASCAP, I guess a younger me already had that idea. Because when I signed up for BMI, I already had an account. I was like, oh, shit. When the hell did I sign this shit up? It was like in like 2016. So I think I had already made a BMI account. I just never registered music on there yet. So I already had with BMI. And then uh, after I checked out with BMI, then that's why I made sure that my music was on Sound Exchange. Then that's why I signed up for Sound Trust, uh, the publishing administration with them. And then after that, then that's when I started realizing you just got to, you know, copyright.gov, but you already own natural copyright. So, like I said, once I got into that formation, I was like, okay, I'm pretty much getting everything. Then I asked you about the uh, own your own LLCs because I had signed up for the uh, the own your own LLCs in Florida. I got a registered agent and everything like that. And then that's when you was like, oh, you know, it's going to take 
a lot of more money since you're funding a whole company instead of, uh, you know, just yourself. So I, that's when you told me about trademarking. And then that's why I ended up finding me a trademarking agency to, uh, that's legit to help me out. So right now I'm in the process of trademarking both of those, uh, both my artist name and then my label name in two different classes and things like that. So basically, okay. so, yeah. So let's just, so let's stay focused like on the music. So you had a distributor, United Masters. So you then you had to on register with, with BMI. Yeah. And you went to the, and you went to Soft Trust to get them to collect and everything. Okay, cool. So you had all of that, and then your song is on there. And then is it is it getting streamed at this point? Like, are you starting to see some sort of traction with it? As far as uh, the other things I register my music on it right now, I'm not seeing anything because you know it, it takes time between nine months to twelve months depending on which one I register my music on. Uh, as far as everything, I see streaming royalties and things like that. But as far that's as what I'm saying. Like, did you did you start seeing streams from those records? Oh yeah, 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 most definitely, most definitely. I thought okay. you like okay. the other, yeah. Okay, so you you seeing streams? You starting to get those streaming checks, and then what happened? Oh, uh, basically, how I started realizing United Masters for my United Master users over here. Basically, what ended up happening with that is uh, when I got ready to uh, register my things on Sound Exchange. It was like search up your artist name on Sound Exchange, and then you'll pretty much be able to find it. Once I found out my records were already on there, I went on ahead to try to go and claim them. And when I claimed them, everything was well. They was like, okay, we're going to let you know about what happens. And then that's why I ended up getting this email right here. I'm going to try to put the camera real quick for my people. And again, this email right here saying I had a overlapsing dispute back in April of uh, 7th of 2020, basically just telling me, you know, Roderick, uh, we found that it's an overlap dis uh, dispute with, uh, as you scroll down, it says I had five records at that time in the dispute. And then, Can like you I said, a little bit closer? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay, yeah, 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 it's way better. Right. So, like, right here, it tells me right now I had no actions required. At that time, I had a pending claim because that was with them, but since everything's done and over with now, it's gone. But at the time, I had, you know, the overlap dispute. So once I ended up getting on sound exchange and everything like that, that's when they started telling me that it was a uh, United Masters, uh, aka uh, Translation Enterprise, that had uh, ended up putting that overlap dispute into focus. And I'm like, what the hell going on? You know what I mean? So that's why I ended up hitting them up. And then once I hit uh, United Masters and everything like that, that's when they kind of told me that, oh, we, uh, for our artists, we like to, you know, put our put their music on Sound Exchange for them. But if you want to claim your Sound Exchange royalties, just give us your RSC code, your UPC code, and then we go from there. And I still was like, what the fuck? Like, the fuck you mean? Like, you like to push, you like to do that for your artists. Like, the fuck you mean you like to do that for your so artists? So, let's, let's, before we jump ahead, so just to clarify for anybody that's paying attention, so Sound Exchange is a collective rights management company. What they do is like digital performance royalty. So, when, when you get your um, music played on like Spotify and all that stuff, those are um, performance royalties. And so, you're able to get that immediately through your distributor. But Sound Exchange is something that's totally different. I've had my phones distributed through CD Baby, Record Union, and through Distro Kid, and none of them had ever, ever touched my Sound Exchange at all, like whatsoever. And so United Master is telling him that they register your songs on Sound Exchange for you, but they didn't register under your name. What name did they register those songs under? United, United Masters, uh, act, like I said, on Translation Enterprise, which is basically Trans, a, Translation Enterprises. Yeah, that's the company that started United Masters. You know, Steve Scott, he had Translation Enterprise, and then the money he used from there, that's when he funded uh, United Masters. With basically, how'd you how'd you find all that out? Like I said, when I had on um, got on my sound chains, and like I said, I seen the overlap dispute. Like I said, with everything happening now, it's not really. I'm trying to find the actual exact email. Uh, for so I can show you guys so you guys will know. Let's see what's email when they actually had that on there. Okay, let's go down. Like, for example, hold on. Like, matter of fact, as what I was just saying to show proof that that's what they end up saying. 
I have this guy named Brian from United Masters, one of their support teams. And that's when he sent me this email saying we're delivering it to Sound Exchange on behalf of our artists as a part of our service to them. But we're always happily allowing you to collect the direct with them as well. Please just send through the UPC code and the title of the song for religious our claims. But they make it sound easy, but it's not exactly like that. So, so they were they were claiming your music like it was theirs. Exactly. And then uh when I spoke with them, like why why would you do that? Because like for instance, when you mentioned CD Baby, I know CD Baby have a uh, like a publishing. Baby, I heard yeah. that they have like some kind of yeah, but that's if you want to. United Masters doesn't give you a want; they do it automatically. And then when you find that shit out, then they're like, "Oh shit, he, he found out that we we oh oh yeah, we can give it back to you. Yeah, we can give it back." Like, no, why the fuck would you do that from in the get go? <laughs> like, I don't understand that. So, so. This shit's fucking crazy. I don't think people are really gonna understand the levity of what's going on. So when you, so when we distribute our music through these distributors, the only thing that they're doing is making the process of getting our music on Spotify, Apple Music, and all these places more convenient. You can get your music on Spotify on your own. You can get your music on iTunes and Apple Music on your own. But what happens is we are paying them a distribution fee. So when we pay you the fee, you get that, and then you might get a percentage of our song, whether it's 20, 30, whatever percentage that, that it is, because you provided that service for us. That's it. That's all that they get any money for. What right. they did with RJS is they went and took his other royalties that they weren't authorized to do, that right. they didn't give you an option to do. Like every single artist, when you release a song, you are the, the publishing company already. You have to sign that shit away. Like when anybody signs a record deal, part of the record deal they sign away is they're signing away their publishing. That's how you make your money forever. You actually right. sign that away. We're not doing that when you're an independent artist as a distributor. So they were going and taking that shit without even asking you or consulting you, claiming the song as theirs, and you had to go and file a claim for your own fucking record. Right. And, and then another thing a lot of artists don't realize when they look over as far as uh, United Masters is on their distribution agreement, they also say you get 90 and 10 percent. 90 and 10 percent is good if you're like how anyone anyway, chop if you're an artist that's already have a huge following and you have an audience, you have people buying your merch, you have people going to your shows, you got people paying for music, um, music videos, you got people that's buying your songs on iTunes, whatever. That's good 90 percent. But when you're an artist. You fucking got like what a hundred monthly listeners or some shit like that. That ten percent is huge. That ten percent is huge. You're not gonna see a check for a while, and then their limit for you to pay out, which a lot of United Masters artists you know, is fifty dollars. So you're getting fucking a hundred. Hold on, listeners. what? Hold on, say it again. What do you mean? They don't pay you unless you pay fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. That's another thing, brother. That's another thing. They don't pay you. That's why I said that whole ninety and ten percent. That 10% is big as fuck if you're not getting, I estimate if you're not getting at least 27,000 monthly listeners to over 50K to 100K on streaming on a single or project or whatever you release, you're not going to see a check for a while. You're probably not going to get your first royalty check in like what, maybe a year, maybe two. You know, you never know. You might get a thousand here, two thousand here. So, like I said, that's the issue with uh, United Masters that I had. Um, a lot of artists don't look at that. They just look at it. This is a free distributor. Uh, it's an app. And this main focus is hip hop. That's that's the, their marketing. It's that whole feel right there. They're focusing on hip hop. And obviously that's going to apply to a lot of hip hop artists. You get what I'm saying? Like Distro Kid doesn't focus on a genre. CD Baby doesn't focus on a genre. Record Union doesn't focus on a genre. In Muse, they focus more on international artists like UK, Switzerland, uh, Australia, etc. But United Masters, their main goal is to get hip hop artists, which makes more people want to uh, go to them. But it's a lot of things you got to read when they when you sign up and you see that distribution agreement. Everybody, please read it. <laughs> I know this shit's long, but please read it. Because if you don't read it, then you're gonna end up finding shit out like me. 
I'm, I'm on their website now, United Masters, and on there it says, we enable artists to maintain full ownership of their master recording rights, which, which you still did, while introducing them to millions of new fans worldwide through our direct brand partnership. So what they've been doing is they've been advertising this, like, maintain ownership, you maintain ownership of your masters, which that's a that's a non-negotiable. Like, you, you're not going to touch my, my master. I mean, that's my shit. Like, you are a fucking distributor. Like, this is like the equivalent of during the the cd era and let's say that somebody like pressed your like you made your music and you needed to get a thousand cds made so you went to the warehouse to get a thousand cds made and the warehouse says hey we'll deliver these cds to best buy for you we'll deliver these cds to the flea market for you for a hundred dollars okay cool you know what I mean? you do you did it now they are your the distributor because they have put it in Best Buy and the, and the flea market. This is like that warehouse coming and saying, yeah, we're going to take the $100, but we also gonna take 30% off of every fucking seed that you, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, no, nigga, I didn't pay for that. I paid you to deliver this shit to Best Buy and to the goddamn flea market. You don't get money off of that. And then they try to advertise like, well, you still own your masters. That's a non-negotiable. That's a moot point. Like, we didn't even talk about that. You know what I mean? And so, the things that they've been pushing and the things that they've been saying is fucking bullshit because for okay. them to have a $50 threshold, that's even more bullshit. I, like I said, I've distributed through three different di distributors now. The threshold has been $10. What United Masters is fucking doing is they know it's going to take some niggas to, to get $50. So every 1,000 streams is, is, is $4. Right. So in what a hundred thousand streams? What's that? Four bucks? So like whatever it is, I don't know what the fuck it is. I can't do do the math right now. 10, <laughs> I'm sorry, forty bucks. Yeah. So for people that have under ten thousand streams, they're they're taking all that money, yeah, and they're taking all the royalties and not even telling you that they're taking the fucking royalties. Just saying, you know what? Fuck it, here you go. Yeah, basically. Right now, I'm trying to see if I can pull up real quick because I'm I'm gonna try to show everybody like. I don't know if you can see the phone <laughs> that well. Let me try to see if I can pull it up real quick. Like, for instance, I'm going to have it right here. Can you see it real good? Yes, yeah, let me. Basically, yeah, yeah, there you go. This is basically all the money I don't have. I don't have United Masters since August. Like I said, the first little money I got was I'm trying to see if this shit will clear up. It's like six cents. Then I went to $3 the next month, 19 cents. December, I started getting some traction, $5. January 18, February 5, 11. I just now hit the $54 mark. Yeah, so if I want to take the money out, I can take it out now. But before, when I was just building myself up, um, just getting my shit on, like I said, Spotify playlists, uh, trying to find creators and um, et cetera like that, I still had like... Uh, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand. Now a couple records are hitting the ten k uh, mark, the sixteen k mark, and then I'm just building on that. But as far as what I was saying earlier, you're a young artist, and you may be in high school, you may be just now like starting out to figure out yourself, figure out your sound, and you're trying to build that audience, and you don't have that many streams. It's gonna be a while. It's honestly gonna be a while. And like I said, I just hit the fifty-four dollars mark, and I just noticed that shit. Either it's not like they're gonna notify you either. I just noticed that shit too. So <laughs> this is this is some fucked up shit, man. This is more yeah. fucked up. Than I think people really realize this is something that people need to be aware of. The fact that they're going and, and they're claiming your, your shit without letting you know that's just not cool. And they're putting it under this company and with. The way they've been marketing, the way they've been advertising, like raise like eight million dollars in their seed round for their company. So they're they're doing that in exchange for taking y'all y'all copyrights, taking y'all. Uh, well, I'm I'm sorry, not y'all copyrights, and taking yeah. your royalties only your fucking songs essentially, unless you yeah. go and you and you fucking correct them. So if you're any artist out there who signs to United, not signs, if you're distributing through United Masters, if you got your songs on there, you need to go to Sound Exchange and try to register your shit. And if claims come up, you need to post that shit on your social media. You need to write to United Masters like, yo, why are y'all claiming my shit? Like I said, I'm going to say it again so people can really hear this. I have three different distributors because throughout my music journey, like I kept switching because the customer service sucked. Like I've never had this happen to me ever. This has never happened. You know what I mean? And I got millions of fucking streams. So y'all need to go out there and claim your shit 
and make sure no one else is claiming your music because right. this is bullshit. This is straight fucking bullshit. Y'all get so caught up in they got these NBA partnerships and all that. Bro, they're, these are signed artists that they're acting like they're fucking independent. Them niggas is not independent. They're not pulling niggas from the United Masters pool and saying, hey, we got yeah. you. Them niggas are secretly signed. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, like, niggas already signed the United Masters. That's that's the point I also don't get from uh, Steve Scott's ass. Like, he makes it seem like it's it's, it's a, a, a guaranteed or you got some kind of traction. Um, First of all, he didn't even knew. I, I did, like, I, I, I kind of did my research on him. He didn't even knew anyone Chopper was using this shit. He just, somebody referenced the, the video to him, checked it out. It's like, oh, okay, this guy doing numbers. And then that's when he eventually, like, I guess, searched him up. It's like, oh, shit, he's using our platform to try to sign the kid. And then, like I said, with all that shit being said, you know, signing um, Animal Chopper, even though he had multiple record deals that was going to come after him and um, try to uh, sign him. But he ended up going with United Master. But that shit was a fucking waste of time because then I heard he has another interview saying how anyone chopper signed with Warner Brothers for like between eight million to eleven million dollars, and I could tell his ass was talking his shit about the whole shit because he went to a, a whole <laughs> press run talking about oh we got anyone chopper, we got Lil Tecca, we got all these different artists, and now they're signed to us and everything like that. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna fight the labels, we're gonna beat the labels, and it's like. Nigga, you kind of acting like a label your fucking self. Exactly. You're just trying to put trying to put that stamp as oh uh United Masters is different. Like you're not that too much different, my guy. Like <laughs> you're not that too much difference. It's just you try to sweep it under the rug. Like I I don't I just don't appreciate that shit personally. And that's why I never fucked with them. That's why everybody kept asking me, like, do you fuck with United Masters? I was like, I'm not doing that with United Masters, man. I, this shit sounded too good to be true. And the fact that they sitting there taking niggas shit, that's just that's just not cool. So who are you with now? Uh, like I said, I'm with Distro Kid and uh, an Amuse. So far, Distro Kid's been doing me yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I like the whole perks of the whole uh, iPhone and series or wherever you are, uh, mix and match might be able to detect your music and stuff because not a master to do that. Like, I could put, hey, Siri, what is this song? They can be like, what the fuck is that? Now I do it with <laughs> Distro Kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now I do it with Distro Kid. They're like, oh, that's RGS, et cetera, or whatever the song might be called. So it's like, okay, that's that's a plus. going to make it, you know, little things like that helps an artist little do they know um like one more second i'm gonna uh, try to focus the camera one more time to show you when you guys hit up united masters it's not gonna be no fucking simple as one email all right let me try to flip wait this camera flips all the way all right i don't know if you guys can see this this was april 7th when i got the first email when fucking like what is this may or something last time i got an email from brian was may the fifth and I just checked my uh, everything like that to make sure everything was gone, because I still had, um, I still have overlapping disputes, and it's fucking May. It's a whole month later, still have overlapping disputes. And basically, the only reason why, because if you guys can see, I got all these emails. I was not fucking off. <laughs> to show all my artists, bro. If you ever have any issue with your distributor, email the fuck out of them. I emailed the shit out of them. I did not play that shit. So, basically, um, the only reason why, uh, the only reason why it only took me a month to get everything back, like I said, I just, I harassed the fuck out of them. I'm just going to be honest, I harassed the fuck out of them. Every day, I sent, like, at least three emails. So, if you guys have any issues, just harass the fuck out of them. And eventually, they're going to get back to you. But if I left it up to Sound Exchange United Masters, they gave me a fucking... I think an 80, 90 day grace period until I heard something back. I said, I'm not waiting fucking 80, 90 days, three months just so I can own my shit. Just so I can get my non interactive royalties for my shit. Like, hell no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So. That's that's some crazy shit, man. But I, I appreciate you showing all that stuff. I appreciate you telling everybody. Cause like I said, man, this is something that everybody needs to hear. It's something that everybody needs to know that United Masters man, is out here taking their shit. And if, if, if you're an artist, like you do not need to sign with them, you do not need to distribute your stuff through them because if you're independent, the whole point is that you own everything. Independent, it's like you're going to have to do is register your music through Sound Exchange, and that's something you need to be doing anyway. And if they're going and they're doing that on your own and they're claiming that shit, like that means that they're beating you to the punch. And like, I don't know legally what could fucking happen where they could say, Yo, we got ownership of this song, we claim it on Sound Exchange, you know what I mean? So don't fuck with them, like. 
No, I'm no. telling you this. Do not do that. No other distributor. The ones I mess with, I've never had them do that. Never heard of this. I've never even read about this happening. So the fact that they're doing this means that they're trying to take advantage of artists. Excuse me. Means they're trying to take advantage of, of artists. And that's the last thing that we want somebody out there who is making your song like RJS is. You learn how to mix your stuff. You get a song that you like, you upload it through United Masters. It goes to Spotify. You get added to some playlists. You fuck with us at Group 82. And that shit start getting some traction. And then United Masters, like, eh, we own it. Like, what the fuck? Like, you don't own a digital performance world. Like, yeah, we do. Because we've been collecting on it since the beginning. You know what I mean? That's like all this stuff he's had to go through trying to, trying to get his song back. Like, it's been a month and all these emails. Like, imagine if the song had millions and millions and millions of, of, of streams. He wouldn't have gave it up that easy. And I don't know Definitely. technically legally if they had to give it up. I mean, get, I feel don't, like, don't fuck with I just feel like I ain't gonna lie. Even even if they didn't or they did give it up, the bad thing if I mean they did if they didn't, that's bad. If they did, that's still bad. Cause then when you try to go ahead and um switch to another distributor, you put your UPC code, your RSC code, that's not a guarantee you're gonna get all those streams back. You may yeah. have a million streams, you might upload that shit, you may have like five thousand. Just just low yep. balling, like high balling the situation. You're gonna be pissed. Like, what the fuck? I just had a million streams, I got five thousand. That's that's the horrible, horrible truth. That's why you gotta pretty much make sure the distributor you use read the fine print. You know, there's so many different distributors out there. Um, my only advice to any other artists, if you're trying to go the free route, fuck with a muse or find another distributor that's free like a muse that's going to make sure they're going to get you 100 percent of their royalties and they're just going to do exactly what they say they are just distribute your shit to dsp if you got money to fund yourself you see baby tune core ditto distro kid and you just pay i don't know i think two corn then they pay per single ep or album release you know distro kid you know we just pay one time a year and everything's unlimited so uh just 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 read the fine print Artists, all artists out there, I know a lot of us like to focus on the music. A lot of us like to just focus on the art. There's so much to it. It's a lot of music shit, a lot of music business shit that goes behind this shit. Like I say, if you can, it's COVID-19. Everybody's stuck at home. My advice to everybody else is either two ways you can do it. Either go at my man Dory and his company and learn it. Sign up to one of the coaching sessions. He'll tell you everything you need to know. Or like I say, if you're kind of another person that like to get on your own, just YouTube this shit. That's why I pretty much tell everybody. I don't have so many people hit me up since all my conversations with you going on Instagram live. I tell everybody the same fucking shit. Instagram, YouTube. They're like, hey man, how do I rest YouTube? But how did you get YouTube? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not obligated to help you. I'm not, I'm not saying I won't. You know what I'm saying? Because it's accessible. Some shit is accessible. You can go in there and figure it out on your own. But my main advice is either get get it at with you or just YouTube. Because the information is out there. You just got to find it. A lot of people don't like finding shit. They like to be hands and food sped a lot of shit. So that's my only advice to a lot of artists out there right now. Yeah, cool, man. Like I said, I appreciate you coming on, being transparent, showing all that, man. Hope you get all your songs back and all that. Um, sharing your, your story with everybody because they need to hear it. Everybody need to hear this. It's something that as independent artists, like we need to be sharing information. And people always ask, like, why I give away so much information on my social media or why? Because it's like this, right? Like, had I did what I did, like RJS wouldn't have been able to be like, yo, is, is this okay? You know what I mean? I'd be like, no, that's not okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, he was able to get that validation. And because, like I said, I've been doing it in myself. So, Go ahead and um, everybody, if you're an independent artist, share your information. And if you're another United Masters artist, go ahead and post that shit. Tag me at Dorian Group 82. Tag, tag RJS too. Um, tag us. And so we, and, and we'll share it to our feed. Cause like I said, this shit just shouldn't be happening. So, but I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you having me, dog. You know what I'm saying? Let me speak my voice and uh, <laughs> able to appeal to all the other people. Cause just like you said, a lot of people don't know this. Cause like I said, at the end of the day, a lot of people just focus on the music. So, like I said, everybody just read the fine print, man. That's all I can say. Just read the fine print, man. But I appreciate you, dog. You don't help me a lot. And I want artists gonna sit here and say before we end this, Dorian has helped me. A lot of people I be seeing the comments, y'all be talking shit. Think you know everything. Y'all niggas don't. So get at my man. He gonna help you out. Cause I'm living proof. He don't help me out. And um, 
you pretty much be straight. Like I said, you know, just ain't ain't. It's not hard to ask a question. It's not hard. You know what I'm saying? Very Don't true. just sit here and just think you know everything. I think that's what, people got to let go of that ego and their pride, man. It's, just, it's yeah. a whole different feel for all that. So I appreciate Absolutely. it, dog, man. Absolutely. So appreciate that. We out the pond. Y'all stay true.